hello students today we will learn that what is a kaplan turbine and how it works and also we will derive some mathematical expression in regards of kaplan turbine kaplan turbine is an hydraulic turbine which is used for converting the hydro hydraulic energy of water into rotational power over some shaft that rotational power in turn is used for uh, driving a generator set to develop electrical power it is like this now over here you can see the entire system diagram schematic diagram of entire system of kaplan turbine suppose this is a river and the flow of water is constrained by the help of some dam so it is having some head head of water so if the water passes through the pan stock and ultimately reaches this is the actual kaplan turbine this is an indicative diagram i will uh, tell you the detailed one also so when water goes inside so the first part where the water reaches uh, uh, from after leaving the pan stock is the uh, casing okay so first of all water reaches the casing then it reaches the guide mechanism okay so ultimately after passing through the guide me mechanism water goes to the center and from the center it falls in downward direction so what happens it falls in the draft tube so when it falls downward in downward direction then there is a runner through which the water rushes so when water rushes through the runner then it st starts rotating the runner this is how the hydraulic energy of water is converted into rotational energy over the shaft of kaplan turbine runner so once again this is a river with the uh, water uh, flow is constrained by the help of a dam so water flows through the pan stock reaches the casing of kaplan turbine and after casing there are guide mechanism from the guide mechanism it water goes to the center from the center water moves in axially downward direction so it moves through a draft tube so in the draft tube over the topmost part there is a runner so when the water flows over the runner uh, runner veins then it starts rotating the runner this is how the rotational power is developed so one thing we can learn over here that is kaplan turbine is a reaction type of turbine reaction means actually it runs on the pressure energy of water so what happens the pressure uh, which is falling over the blade of this runner drives it to rotate in a corresponding direction this is how the power is developed over the runner second thing is that it is an axial flow machine means the flow of water through the runner is in axis is this is the axis of runner then flow of water is in the axis of the runner so therefore it is an axial flow machine now this is the kaplan turbine and this is the detailed diagram of this kaplan turbine you can see water coming from the pan stock first of all reaches the casing you can see water coming from the pan stock reaches the casing and there are guide blades mounted so what happens after casing the water passes through guide blades you can see so it makes the water to rotate inside the guide blade directs the water in a particular angle so that it develops a whirl in water you can see a rotational motion in water ultimately it reaches the center and it falls in downward direction in axially downward direction so the cut section view of this turbine is over here you can see that from the casing uh, the water passes through the guide veins so it develops a rotational motion in water ultimately it falls in axial direction through a draft tube so just after leaving this casing section in downward direction over the center there is a runner so over here i am the i am having a picture of runner also you can see this is how the runner looks like runner is having a hub this is the hub the central part is the hub and the hub is containing the blades or veins with it you can see over here okay so in case this is the shaft and the radius of hub is r1 and radius of the runner is r2 okay so the average radius of runner would be r1 plus r2 by 2 this is what r is it is like this r1 is the radius of hub and r2 is the radius of the runner so we have to take the average radius of runner that is equal to r1 plus r2 by 2 so this is how when the water rushes through this runner then it starts rotating the runner in corresponding direction so the power is available over the shaft this is how the hydro hydraulic energy of water is converted into rotational power over the shaft 
Now let's do some mathematical analysis in regards of this Kaplan turbine. See what happens that when water reaches the center, then it is having a rotational motion because the guide vanes are directing the water to move like so. It is like this. But when it reaches the center, then it starts falling in axial, axially downward direction also. So suppose that water is moving with tangential velocity Vw. Since water is rotating over the center, so it is also having a tangential velocity. A rotating entity is always having a tangential velocity over its peripheral surface. So suppose Vw is the tangential velocity of water when it is rotating and going inside the center of this system. Suppose it is falling in downward direction with velocity Vf. Therefore, the vector and over the bottom, what is there? There is the runner. So, the velocity vector which is going to interact with the runner equals to Vf is the velocity of water in axially downward direction and Vw is the tangential velocity of water. So, Vf plus Vw that is equals to V is the velocity vector which is what going to interact with the blade of the Kaplan turbine. Now what happens when the water leaves the blade then it is having no whirl component means when it leaves the blade then it is only having the axial velocity Init means initially it is having Vw that is the tangential component but finally uh, the water doesn't leaves the blade in rotating fashion. Initially water is entering inside toward the blade water is entering inside in rotational fashion but finally when it leaves the blade it is only having the axial velocity there is no Vw. Now initially with what angular momentum water is going to interact with the blade we know this thing that angular momentum is given by mvr where m is the mass of rotating entity and v is the tangential velocity of the rotating entity and r is the radius about which the mass is rotating. So since the tangential velocity of water when it is going inside going to interact with the runner is Vw therefore the initial angular momentum equals to j1 equals to mvw into r ok now finally since it is having uh, water is leaving the blade without any rotational motion therefore finally there is no Vw so therefore final angular momentum would be j2 equals to m0 into r that is equals to 0 here m is the mass flow rate of water whatever mass flow rate which is going uh, through this system that is what m over here is. Now we know this thing that in uh, translational motion the rate of change of momentum is equal to the developed force. Similarly in rotational motion the rate of change of angular momentum is what equal to the developed torque. Therefore what is the change in momentum? It is equal to the final momentum that is equal to 0 minus initial momentum that is equal to mvw into r. Therefore the total torque developed over the rotor is equal to minus mvwr. Because over here m is what? It is already in kg per second. This is the mass flow rate. So therefore this much angular momentum is changing per second. So this much is the developed torque over the rotor. Now in translation motion the power is given by force into velocity. Similarly in rotational motion the power is given by the torque into angular velocity. So torque developed is equal to mvwr over here we are disregarding the negative sign because we are only bothered with the magnitude of torque. So, mvwr into omega is what the power developed over the blade. Now, over here, what is r omega? We know this thing, r omega is what? See, r is the average velocity of this runner. So, r into omega would be what? It would be, we know this thing that uh, r into omega gives the tangential velocity over the periphery. Similarly, r into omega will give the average tangential velocity of this runner. Therefore, in place of this r omega we can write u u is the average tangential velocity of this runner so our ultimate power expression is mvw into u now what would the efficiency simple when the water is entering inside and going to interact with the runner it is having head with it suppose the amount of head which the water is containing is capital H. Therefore, the amount of energy which is going to interact with this runner would be equals to mgh because in case we want to convert head in terms of energy then just we have to multiply with mg. So mgh is the input and what is the output mvw into u. So therefore output upon input is what the hydraulic efficiency we can cancel this m. So vw u upon gh is what the hydraulic efficiency of this Kaplan turbine. Now what would be the flow rate through the system? See 
we know this thing that water is flowing between the annular space of this draft tube inner peripheral surface and this hub outer surface okay because water cannot pass through this hub so water is passing through this annular space so it is like this that a uh, annular cylinder type of water annular cylinder column of water is going inside so and with what velocity is it is flowing inside the velocity by which it is moving in axially downward direction is vf therefore we know this thing that uh, flow rate is given by area into velocity so what is the area of this annular space that would be pi d2 square by 4 the area of this outer circle minus pi d1 square by 4 that is area of this inner circle so the area into vf would be what the flow rate through the runner is now two more important terms in regards of this kaplan turbine flow ratio and speed ratio here flow ratio is what in case we divide the velocity of flow vf with the root to gh here h is the head which is input to this runner then it is called as flow ratio and in case we divide the outermost peripheral speed of runner suppose it is equals to uo over here u is what u is the average tangential velocity of runner but uo is what uo equals to uo equals to the velocity of the tangential velocity of the tip of this runner so the outermost radius is what that is equals to r2 so r2 into omega is what the tangential velocity of the extreme point of this runner in radial direction therefore uo upon root 2 gh is what called as speed ratio so hope you would have understood the basics of kaplan turbine thank you